Hello, I'm Rick Stivers. I'd like to welcome you to Young Martin's Reels. Today's project is going to be this Mitchell 300S. And I know what you're thinking. Uh, how, how difficult can this be? It shouldn't be hard at all. It's a, it's a Mitchell 300. And, um, well, it is and it isn't. It, uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I took this thing all apart last night and redid it. And that's, when I say last night, I mean yesterday and last night. It took me about seven hours to get this reel back together and functional. It didn't work when I first got it. And um, so things were not put together properly in it to begin with. So it's, most of it come down to a shimming issue. And I'm going to walk you through this. Um, I'm going to take the, the bale back apart, much as I hate to, because I did manage to finally get it back together correctly yesterday, but it certainly took me a while and hopefully the second time around will not take nearly so long but uh i'm going to edit in you're going to see the beginning of where i had started and i'm going to put that in here but then i'm going to edit it out and uh, i'm going to bring you back to this time when i go to put it all back together um, so it uh there was a whole lot of work that went into this mitchell reel and it is a nice reel it functions well now um it uh Let's see if we can back that out a little bit. Uh, the bail trips, it does everything it's supposed to do now. Um, well, when you wind it proper, set it up properly, right here, there, okay? Everything now functions properly. It didn't when I started yesterday, and you'll see, I'm gonna show you that part of the video. So um, I'm gonna stop here, edit in, and um, Put this at the beginning of the video, and then I'll show you the dismantling, the taking apart yesterday, and the cleaning up, or the getting it ready. And then you're going to see as I go back to putting it back together. We're going to start with the bale and work our way through that. And um, the only part that I'm not real sure about is the drag washer install. It didn't appear to be installed correctly, but it seems to be missing a part. But I can't find a, a schematic for this particular reel. And because I can't find the schematic, that makes it difficult to know exactly what the proper stack up is inside here for the drag washers. It's got a flex washer, which they had on the bottom, a uh, tension washer, they had it on the bottom, but it doesn't fit all the way down in the bottom. It almost does, but there's a, a ring down in there with an uh, inset portion that sticks up from the bottom. And none, none of the drag washers actually fit down into that overlap. So I'm not real sure if there's a piece missing out of there or what's going on, but it does work. It's functional. Um, I certainly wouldn't be afraid to take it out fishing. And um, it, uh, it's, an, it's a nice reel. It is not a user-friendly reel at all as far as maintenance goes. It is one of the hardest reels that I've ever had to deal with as far as trying to get the shims correct inside here so that the gears aren't grinding and, um, but I seem to have it down now. So I'm going to stop now, cut in to the next part. And today's portion, we'll be back. I'll have all this disassembled and we'll be putting it back together. Yes. Now I think body structure wise here, I think the back half of this reel is very, very similar probably to what a Mitchell 300 is. But this 300S is a spurted, skirted spool which means the spool fits down over the outside of the rotor instead of down inside the cup of the rotor. So this is a completely different animal as far as this headed unit goes. So this is going to be kind of interesting, especially since this one doesn't work. Um, if you look, the bale does not stay released. Um, so I don't know how the system works or what's going on in here, but hopefully there's no broken parts and uh, I'm hoping I can get this one up and going. It feels a little draggy, maybe even a little grindy. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see when we get inside it, see what we find. So let's start off by taking off. And by the way, the anti-reverse works. The drag works. Um, all those components of this work. This spool does look a little crusty. I think what I'm probably going to end up doing. Let's see. All right, let's go ahead and remove the spool in the normal fashion, which is going to be crank this down and 
push in on the center and the spool should come off. There we go. All right, now, yeah, if you'll look inside here, you'll see this is completely different from what you normally find in a uh, Mitchell 300. So we're gonna take this apart and see what we can do. We'll start off by taking the handle off, I hope. Oh, maybe we're not. There we go. All right, and notice this is different from the 300 and that it's got a plastic knob on here. So there's there's a beginning of things not being made quite the same. And uh, we're gonna scrub this up, get it cleaned up. Well, I think we are anyway. See if we can get the rest of this working again. Um, let's go ahead and take the side cover off. And this part seems to be pretty much the same as a normal Mitchell 300. Well, it actually is very clean inside. This obviously is not where it belongs. Um, this gear fell off, this gear fell off. This anti-reverse has fallen off as well. It's got there, it's back on its post. Okay, and well, we've seen that configuration and several other reels, but I've never seen it in a Mitchell 300 reel before. And, uh, okay, I don't see any shims there. Although, if we look here, we've got one, two, three, three shims on this end gear here. This gear so when it goes on back here, and it had fallen off. It goes on here like so. Now this one, these three shim washers that fell off, they're gonna go here. And then This gear drops on like so. All right, now this does not appear to be normal um, fishing reel grease that's inside this. It feels like uh, Vaseline. And well, I have found that Vaseline can work in a fishing reel, it doesn't seem to be the world's best lubricant for that. Okay, we're gonna take this part off. And then this piece will come up. Notice that this reel also has a seal to help keep contaminants out. And that seems to have done a pretty good job. All right, now the axle shaft will come out. And that brings us to here so that we can now remove this nut. baffle plate. All right, now what do we got in here? This is different. This is completely different. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and take this rotor off and see if we can see. Okay, now, for whatever reason, now the bale is tripping, or lifting anyway, but it doesn't seem to want to drop back down once it's up. I'm not sure I understand how all that's working just yet. Okay, we've got a spring in here somewhere, and it appears that we're missing a screw right there. So I'll have to keep an eye, see if that's, oh, let's also not lose these shim washers. I've got 
one. Two, two shim washers in there, and it appears that this lever right here actually should be underneath of this, and it's not. It's over beside it, and so I'm going to have to take that apart and see what's what that's supposed to do because this doesn't seem to be doing anything where it's at. Um, I believe that that arm right there is supposed to be up under that. And when that comes up to lock like that. Okay, this, when it rotates around, should catch on that and trip it and throw it back down right there. That doesn't seem to be what it wants to do. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay. Trips over. Okay. All right. Well, maybe that just wasn't fitting in there well enough to trip on it. All right. I'm going to try setting that back on. Like so... Putting the two shim washers, maybe it was just out of alignment. Put the two shim washers back on. Set this back in place like so. And let's tighten it down. It's really gritty. It's very dirty in there. It could just be it's got sand in it, causing it to bind. over no it does not release let's go the other way okay i think this might be sprung slightly let's bend it down just a hair there we go nope <laughs> now it doesn't want to trip back But at least it will trip to release. All right. Well, I think mostly what it probably needs is just to be taken apart, cleaned real good, and reassembled. Maybe then it'll go back to working properly. Because right now it's got a lot of dirt and grit in it. So we're going to take this baffle plate out this off. We're going to lift this rotor out, and now we're going to disassemble this rotor. Remember, they've got these two shim, three shim washers, four shim washers in there. Okay, so one of them must have been on the bottom of the baffle plate. All right, so those are there. This guy is not tight, and that could be part of the problem, too. But for now, we're going to go ahead and take out the screw. And lift that plate out like so yeah there's a lot of dirt down inside here all right let's trip this to relieve some of the tension off of it and uh, one of this, one side or the other of this is going to have a spring. And I think it's going to be this side because this side seems to have the trip release. Okay, so we're going to start off. All right, I'm going to tell you in advance, if you have this in this position right here, and you, uh, it's working, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, and you can bring it back here, you can trip it, and it trips, leave it alone all right this bale has got dual springs in it 
uh, plus a secondary spring that goes in right here. And uh, it is a uh, an absolute nightmare to try to get everything worked back in there. And the springs are counterwound in opposite directions. So if you get them confused and get them in backwards, it can really mess them up. This is not an easy bale to take apart and put together. So that being said, I'm going to take it apart. Try removing this screw. Okay, now the bell wire doesn't seem, oh, we've got a spring in this side. I'm hoping it's not a broken spring. It is a long spring though, I can tell you that. Look at how deep that spring is. Wow. All right, that's gonna be some fun to put back in. Okay, now a washer just fell out, a shim washer just fell out, which that had to fit inside there. All right, now this appears to be spring-loaded, and it looks like it's going to have to be a part that's going to have to be installed after this part goes on with the spring. Yeah, I'm going to have to try to pull it down and try to balance more than one spring at a time. Okay. really know that this spring wants to pop out of here <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and lift it and let it unspring itself there we go and then this part this is our trip release okay and this is the part I was afraid would be damaged but I don't see anything on it that is damaged. Everything seems to be good. Doesn't seem to show what signs of wear. So that's all going to be going back into there. Oh, there's the hole for the spring right there. I was wondering where it was. There it is right there. Okay. Now, look at that. This one has two springs, one on each side. So they wanted to give this thing its whole shot at being able to survive, I guess. All right, we're going to take this rest of the bail wire off. And slide this out, or try to. All right. And now that's actually... A nut that fits down inside. Well, good luck ever finding every one of those to replace. All right. Don't lose that. All right. We still have this guy being spring loaded. And uh, many of you will say, hey, don't take it apart. There's no reason to because it's fu perfectly functional. If you're doing one of these and everything's working, fun do not take this apart. But I'm going to take it apart to show you how to put it back in the event that somebody already has. And who knows, maybe I won't ever get this back together. All right, well, that didn't show us much, did it? All right, this is the last screw holding this thing together. And 
so far, I have not seen anything that I would think was causing this to not function. Okay, it's going to come all the way around to there, pop out, and yeah, there's nothing there. The only thing I can figure is there's dirt and dust in here causing this to bind. So I'll be back to you in a little bit with everything cleaned up. Everything at this point has been loaded onto my parts cleaning tray to get all scrubbed up. So that's what I'm going to do. It's time now to put it back together. And um, we're going to start off with the um, roller side of the bale we're going to put it it goes on this side over here that doesn't have the spring assembly so we're going to come over here and install that first okay and the way we're going to do that is we're going to take the spring here it's got this tag end right here see that tag end well that has to go into this hole right here okay and the way that you know that you have the correct spring here if you set it into the hole here and you look at it this is for the um roller side of the bale and the way that you know you've got the proper spring for that is it's going if you come off the tag in and then follow the spring around it's going to go clockwise in a clockwise motion that means you have the correct spring for that side if you've got one that goes counterclockwise that's going to be for the spring side of the bale so we're going to stick this one in first we're going to put that tag in into that hole in the uh there we go and then we have to get that same tag in, this one here, to go into the little tiny hole. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. Okay, that tag in has got to go in there. So let's try this out and see if we can make it happen. Okay, there we go. And you know, you'll know that it's in when um, it clicks into place and when you try to put tension against it and it wants to spring back. Okay, so you bring it around. You've got the two holes in. Bring it around and you're going to let this side lift up just a little bit and then it's going to drop down in that hole right there. That's where you want it, right there. Okay. And while you're holding it there, that's the challenging part. You're going to put the screw back in. All right, that's when you know you've got it. Okay, you can bring it down, and it will spring right back up again. Just like that. Okay, this, this should be tight, and it should be spring. Now, let's go ahead and put the cover plate back on. Not that that exposed anything. That's something you really could have left on and never taken off. But we'll go ahead and show you anyway. That showed you how it went and what's under there. Okay, and that is the easy side of this bale assembly. Now comes the hard side. That's going to be this side over here. Now on this one, Normally, I don't believe that this piece comes off, but on this particular bale, it does come out. So I've got it off. It makes it so much easier if it is off. All right, we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to put that tag end into the hole, set it up inside there, and you'll know that you've got it in there when you can wiggle it and it's going to spring right back to where it was. Okay, I think I've got it in the hole. All right. Once it's in the hole, you're going to take this other tag end here and put it in this hole in the frame, like so. Then rotate it around just a little bit. Okay, you can feel the spring tension. You'll know when you've got it because you'll feel it's going to have good ten spring tension right there already. Okay, I take this now and install the screw. Okay, 
Okay. And now, there you go. You'll know you've got it right when it fits like that. Okay. They're both going to want to be kicking in that direction. Okay. Now, we're going to put the lock assembly on. And this is a little complicated, but not too bad. All right. Start off with this assembly. Hold it here with this tag end here. That's going to go inside this hole right here. And then it's going to rotate up and drop in. Now, you see this groove right here? Well, if you look at this plate, there's a boss or shoulder sticking out on it. That's going to go into that hole right there. All right, so if you take this plate and you stick it in here, you get it to go in. Now, it's not going to want to go in all the way yet because we've got to rotate this around to find the hole. See that hole right there? That's where it's going to go in. When this is ang angled up here like this, that's going to be in that hole. We've got it in this hole, in the slot. We've got it in there. The only thing left to re require there is going to be installing the spring. Now, the spring, you just stick it in up here, like so. You want it to catch up here on the top of this plate. And you may need to adjust a little bit to make room for it. There we go. And then slide it down and into place right there. Okay, and that spring is gonna push this plate up to lock that when this trip lever activates. Set this one back in place, like so. And this is by far one of the hardest bales I've ever dealt with. Okay, i put the screw back in, like so. this screw back in all right now this is installed and see how it's locked if you trip this little lever here see it releases it comes up locks in trip the lever it releases okay we're going to go ahead at this point put a little bit of oil here and put a little bit of oil here. Go ahead and lock this up in the up position. And now we're going to take our bell wire, stick it in the hole, and find the location for it. There we go. Good. Okay, trip the lever. Comes over. Okay, now this is in the right position for attaching to there. Set it back in place. Now on this, we've got a sleeve on here. We have, actually the sleeve is up inside the roller here. It turns nicely on there when it's installed. And that's what we wanted. So we're going to put another drop of oil under the sleeve. Like so. And now this cap piece on our washer whichever one you want to call it slide that in and now this piece has got a screwdriver head on one side and it's flat on the other side so leave the screwdriver head side out screw it in and there you have it the bale is assembled and ready to work okay now, you might think that that was the most difficult part of this. And normally, you would be right if everything was as it should have been to begin with, but this reel wasn't operating properly to begin with. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install this shim washer right here. We're going to slide it onto this sleeve right here. And then I'm going to put a little bit of grease on this shaft Where that rotor is going to spin. That's a little more grease than I wanted, but it'll work. Okay, spin that around. Okay, there's no drag there, so that's fine. All right, now on this, we're going to go ahead and grease up the gear. Now, all this was greased last night, so it's really not needing much, but I'm doing it just so that you see the procedure. Okay, slide that on. That looks good. Now, what I encountered 
last night was first off this guy goes in and this is a tensioner and I got it upside down. This is a tensioner and its purpose in life seems to be to hold tension on the spool up while this thing is winding. Um, and if it's not doing its job properly, it messes everything up. And it, all right, and now we're back at where I was at last night. No matter how many times I shimmed this thing, set it up or anything else, when I would put it back together, the bell wouldn't trip back. And the uh, and if it would do a trip, it wouldn't trip back coming the other way. And yet, nothing I seem to do today, putting it back. Now, what I did find yesterday, and I was really tempted to leave it that way, is if you remove this assembly here, this piece, all this problem goes away. And if you take this piece out all together, like so, and put it back together with all the shims, it does everything it's supposed to do, just like that. But what it doesn't do is hold this head solid. So it's not a good solution. But it is a solution if you find yourself in that predicament. But I'm going to keep plugging at this. I really think maybe what's wrong is that there's too much tension on this tensioner. So I'm going to try to remove some of that and see if it doesn't correct the problem. mistake right there. That doesn't belong under that. It belongs over it. Or I believe it does. Well, that's interesting. It's, like I said, this thing has been taken apart and put together incorrectly. Maybe that was part of the problem to begin with. Let me go ahead. I don't think that's going to work, but let's try it. Okay, there we go. Now it's solid. It turns. It doesn't bounce up and down. So the tensioner is holding it. All right, so that was assembled incorrectly to begin with. Or I'll go back and check the video and uh, verify that that's how it was when I took it apart. All right, we've got that together now. So I said this is not a fun reel to do. All right, next on the agenda is going to be to slide in our axle shaft assembly, which has already been lubricated. So I'm not going to slather on some more. Okay, we're going to set this in. This post right here is going to go into that hole on the axle right there. And if you've got it right, then it should do just like that. 
when you slide the axle in and out. All right, this one here, this one's got the three points on it. If you set this up in the middle and you take that middle post or tab and stick it right directly across the middle, if you get it right, I got it, don't have it right. If you get it right, you can rotate it like this and it'll go around and around and around and up and down. Okay, so if you don't rotate it, it's not going to work for it. Or if you can't rotate it. All right, we're getting very close to the end. Now, the next thing I found was these shim washers right here. We had one too many on there. And what that was doing, it was taking this gear and forcing it too far up against this gear, causing it to grind. So I took one of the spares off, the thinnest one, and I moved it over here onto this post where it's not going to affect anything, but it's there in case it's ever needed. All right. Then we lubricated this. Drop it in. Let's go ahead. I, I don't mind giving this one another shot of oil. All right. Drop it in. Now, as this one's going in, you have to put your anti-reverse paw on. Okay. And you, what you got to do is get this gear to go in between these two tags right here. So take the top one, hook it on there a little bit, bring this around, and there is a post. Yeah, I'm on the wrong side. There's a post right here that slides up through this hole. So bring this around, lift this up to get that up over that post and put it on the post. Once it's on there, then as this rotates, there's your anti-reverse. If you flip this lever, that pushes it out away from it where it can't impact and you don't have anti-reverse. Okay, so we're going to leave the anti-reverse turned off. Now, this gear is going to go on next. It goes on like so, and all this has been lubricated. Yeah, something isn't going like it's supposed to here. That's not going all the way down. Oh, there it is. That's, yeah, that's good. It's got a, it's got a brass shoulder right here that it sits on top of, and it's sitting on that. It's good. All right, then this one goes on this side right there, like that. And now before we set that in place, come back over here, and this is the gasket for it. The gasket's got a, one side is kind of three-dimensional. That's the side you're going to put down. Okay, and then we want to kind of stand this up a little bit because if you just take this and just try to flip it over on here, the gears are going to want to fall out of it. So what you do is you stand them both up like this, set them sideways, and then ease this back together like this. Okay, once you got it lined up, go ahead and put your three screws back in. spin freely it does okay put the handle back on there we go anti-reverse on okay we're going to put some oil down in here that lubricated good all right now we're on to the drag stack and like i said this drag stack doesn't really make a lot of sense unless it's missing a part so you unscrew the top slide that off and you've got this counter in here you can pull that straight out and now you've got this keyway or click spring and we're going to take that out but you got to be careful because it's pretty heavily tensioned it will shoot out if you're not careful okay there we go now you can just slide this out the bottom that whole assembly comes out and now all the drag stack will come out of the top and i don't know if you can see it but if you look down in there yeah you can see it in the video 
See this shoulder right here? Well, see that's that drop off? Well, there's nothing down in there, and yet there's nothing to ride on this. And the way this was built up originally, they had this spring tensioner laid in there. And well, that really doesn't seem to get much done either, does it? So I think I'm still, I think I'm, that's the way it was. I think I'm going to put it back together that way because the way I've got it isn't really helping any way in it either. So we're going to put that one in first. Okay. Then what you've got is. three Teflon washers, two eared washers, and two keyed washers. Okay, now that means that one's going to have to go in the bottom against that tensioner. So I would think normally that you would want to put the heaviest of the washers down there to ride against the tensioner. And that would be this keyed washer and this keyed washer. These two are by far the heaviest. So we're going to drop that in first. Then we're going to drop in the first Teflon washer. Then we're going to drop in an eared washer. Then another Teflon washer. Then a keyed washer. Then another Teflon washer. And then finally, another eared washer on top of that. Now, if you'll notice, there's still a pretty good gap in between what we've got here and where the spring rides. So, it... Uh, doesn't I'm just not crazy about this the drag stack on this but it does work it does what it's supposed to do so I can't really complain about it too much all right slide this back in get all those washers and keyways lined up Keyway, there we go. Now, this is keyed also. So set it in place, slide it down. And now you can adjust the drag washer back down. Set this in place. And for the life of me, see this little tab right here? I have no idea what that's supposed to do. Oh, yeah, I do. It's a clicker. Right there in the center, that's the clicker. That's a very weak clicker. I don't know how long that's going to last. Well, it's lasted for a long time so far. But that's a very small clicker that clicks inside there. All right. I've never seen one like that. Lots about this Mitchell reel are different. All right. Let's tighten down the drag. That's too tight. There we go. And there's that clicker. All right, there's the veil. And there we have the Mitchell 300S. And I don't plan to ever take this beast apart again. Um, I hope you guys, I will take the spool off because it needs some repaint up here. So I'm gonna clean the top of the spool off and reshoot the top of it. I'm gonna leave the bottom alone because it's not damaged, but down there, I'm going to take all the line off of it, though, and clean up the top of this. Because this jagged edge right here, that's going to cause line to fray. So what we'll do is I'll clean that up, sand it down nice and smooth, and reshoot it. And uh, that'll be fine. But there you have it. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you didn't like it, <laughs> it's okay. I don't have a problem. It, this, was, this was not my finest moment. And uh, this reel really kicked my tail. If uh, you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. If you like, did like what you did, hit, please hit the like button. Um, I'm averaging about uh, 150 views a week on these videos, and uh, I'm getting like 10 likes a week. So <laughs> It doesn't do anything for me to get a like, but it does help you guys to find my videos. If my videos aren't getting likes, when other people are on the search for them, it puts them way down in the search engine. The algorithm can't find my videos as easily. So if you when you guys hit the like buttons, it kind of increases them in popularity and makes them more likely that somebody's going to be able to find them when they're looking for them. For now, that's Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, signing out.